from Los Angeles, California. This is the Mad Scientist Party Hour. Oh, hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Mad Scientist Party Hour. My name's Kevin Kraft. Joined once again by a man completely pantless and underwearless. And he's in the middle of playing a xylophone with his boner. That's Jeff Clark. Hey, what's up, guys? And beaming to us from beyond the grave, the bearded booger-eating phantasm known as Shuddy Boy. Yo! (laughs) And joining us once again... Our friends and yours, Alex Wilson and Seek Donnelly. Yay! Yay! Bra, bra. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Way better than Shuddy's. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while since we've all been, I guess, not in the same room, but in the same audio unit. Well, there was that circle jerk at one time. Yeah. That was a weird send off. <laughs> yeah, that was. We should have come up with a better idea for you guys' going away party, but landed on Circle Jerk and committed. <laughs> I mean, it, it worked out well. Go. We all finished. There's well. no, yeah. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> Jeff ate the cookie. There's no bonding experience quite like gooey cookie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jeff like snack a attacked it. Trip. So oh, we have a very nice man. triangulation going on. We got me repping Los Angeles, Jeff repping Long Beach. Shuddy Boy repping PA, Seek repping Florida, and Alex repping Nebraska. The Midwest. Midwest in it. Omaha. In the middle. (laughs) Yeah, we just need someone from Chaz, and then we'll have all of the the corners (laughs) occupied. (laughs) Is that still, that joke still works, right? I felt like years ago, but that that happened actually, guys. Yeah, it actually I, happened. If somebody's downloading this, maybe like three or four months after post date, I, I it might be teetering on the edge. But I still got it. I didn't. Yeah. What? <laughs> He's kidding. He gets it. <laughs> Shuddy's the smartest out of all of us, according to the last Trivial Pursuit results. Who's Jay? <laughs> you know, I had somebody hit me up saying. Uh, on Patreon, on one of one of Kevin's nerd holes, where I play retro video games, someone suggested we find a way to do a trivia game online between the three of us, mm. and make it like the successor to the Trivial Pursuit. The last test of test of, of which we did. How long ago was that? Like two years ago, maybe. It was the last Ellis Mania. Yeah, the last one in Vegas. Yeah. That was quite some time ago. But that's not a bad yeah. idea. I feel like we could find a some sort of online trivia game. There's um that one on the Quiplash. Yeah, I was about to say Quiplash. Yeah, the Jack Jackbox, Jack Jack me off in a box trivia, whatever. That's the one. <laughs> I'm mm, I'm borderline unbeatable on Quiplash. We but we're not I, talking I want... about Quiplash. We're talking about the trivia game on the Jackbox party pack. I thought someone just said Quiplash. Did and then I there just was, hear that? Alex was talking about the movie Whiplash, which he loves. That's not that's I like not J.K. True. Simmons. <laughs> no. We were referencing Quiplash in reference to there being a trivia game with it. That's... Perfect segue. Uh, Alex, how many qui- Whiplash sticks would you suck? Whiplash sticks? I don't know. It's like a f- 3754 four dicker. How many Elliot Page dicks would you suck for Whiplash? Probably How many are available? Same. Yeah, is there like... <laughs> are there extra? I don't know. 11? Like 95? Like just make it a whole like family gathering of Bukaki affair? Jeez. that You just b- b- busted out 90 extra bonus dicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot. A second. Was Elliot this is Page taking a weird in? turn right out of the gate? <laughs> Whiplash. I just remember the drummer guy from Crappy Fantastic Four and Just Kidding Simmons. 
Miles Teller. Yes. Yeah. There we go. That's his name. Yeah. No, who knows? Well, I have, I do have a movie trivia game prepared later in the show. Is it Letterbox D? It is Letterbox D, with a twist, courtesy of Alex Wilson. Yeah. Is he playing collusion? No, there isn't been collusion. I'm an honest collusion. See, this is Alex. This is why we haven't done a intelligence heads up since we played Trivial Pursuit. Because there is zero trust in this room. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, yeah. you know, we could we could all put on the same episode of Jeopardy, and it's like, oh, you're gonna watch it first. Yep, I don't trust it. It could be a rerun, and you'll remember. Well, all it's the not answers. even it's not even that so much as Jeff doesn't want to play Jeopardy by the Jeopardy rules. Jeff wants I, there to be no consequences for wrong answers. Absolutely. Oh. And what are you- <laughs> What? What's up? And what are you risking? Losing the bitch ass Shuddy and Kevin. Nothing. <laughs> no. You're not risking anything. You're not no, risking uh, anything. Thank you, Alex. That has been my point from the jump. If you're going to play it, you play it the fucking right way and you play to win. You don't play to give joke answers just to give an answer with no repercussions. I mean, it's Mad Scientist Party Hour. Everyone wants to see who goes the most negative. That's what it's going to end up with, probably. Like, who has the least negative money how when's the last time you've watched jeopardy i mean i know he how means many, you're, you're talking about the pumanati hold on hold on the well, pumanati if they're going to get an audio experience they're going to want talking and jeopardy can be hard there might not be anything said for long stretches of time at least if we can riff and make fucking funny jokes it'll help uh, improve the experience for the listeners and like it's just a funner way to play the game. Like sitting there and tracking it, like right and wrong. Fun, like that's fucking more lame. fun. More fun. What did I say? Funner? You said funner. Whatever. All right, Shadi. We're, we're not scoring this the, the conversation. <laughs> the game hasn't started. I just got negative points. But I will say, this is one of those times where I'm sort of Switzerland here. Like I see it Shadi's way and I see it Jeff's way. Like if we're purely just trying to figure out who knows the most right answers like losing points could make you lose the game despite knowing more things and isn't that what we're trying to figure out that's a great point that's a great point like i can just what if i just assume the worst in you guys and assume you guys are shitheads and i don't answer and i win zero to negative one to negative two Maybe you guys need to like take a standardized test. No, those are. I almost <laughs> used the G word. We're not going to do that. You're not going to take the the ACT. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. Uh, SAT we're not doing practice one... tests. Yeah, do like an SAT Wonder practice Lick. test. Not, none of that shit. I, I like you... Jeopardy. Like. Shuddy, I don't, this I don't is the understand thing that could, the problem with the rule. This is something that could actually even work against you because. I I technically got it wrong because I said Diane Prince, oh. and you didn't give it to me. You could have the same thing happen in Jeopardy. You could. You're absolutely you could right. Be, you could get way You're more things. Absolutely. And I I can I can look into my shuddy crystal ball, and forever going forward, if Jeff won, he's like. Whatever, I beat you in Jeopardy. You're like, ah, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I got more correct answers. The technicality. Well, technicality. It would be, if we're playing it by the points, then it would be by the points. Yes, I'd be salty, and I'd probably find every reason to discount whoever <laughs> else's victory it is. But that's the same shit you guys have been doing to me for two years with the Trivial Pursuit. That's hold on, unfair. No, no, no. That's <laughs> that is not fair. I'm gonna push back on that because I have sportsmanship and i'll hold my l's you beat me fair and square i i i i make excuses or i use the rationale that i choked i was ahead in the game early on but i've given you credit i've never i've never disparaged no and uh, that's, but it, like you just said i choked so you, I, you couldn't even like, give me a clean no i but it's like kevin said there's no trust in the room 
Well, that's a separate <laughs> conversation. No, there shouldn't be because if I can cheat, I'm going to cheat. I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm trying to, my goal is to win. And if I win, then I'm smarter than you guys. However, I get the win, whatever. I don't, yeah, if I watched it and wrote down the word or answers, fuck you guys. So even know. if you got like a quiz quiz show type situation, you you wouldn't be walking around in your in your inner monologue being like, "Oh man, I, I won, but it was a hollow victory." You'd be like, "I am legit smartest," like even though you weren't. Well, I yeah, I have I yes. have a simple solution. The honor system. I, I want you. No, no. Yeah, you guys. No, no, you're right. <laughs> I was going to say, why doesn't Alex put together a general knowledge type game show and host it on an episode? Ooh. Bullshit. I could do that. I mean, nope. do you not trust just, me, Jeff? I, it's that not that I don't trust tr- No, it, I gave it's not, you my nuts. You did. And Kevin stole them from me. Kevin um, stole my nuts from you? Oh, my God. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, I am known to be a not, nutsack thief. <laughs> it's not about not trusting you. It's more of like you guys are more alike, right? You have similar uh, tastes and stuff. And there could be just a chance like you put together answers unknowingly that fit what, their. What if I um, got the questions from like an education like website, like a Khan Academy type thing. Do you think, you think Alex would put together like an intelligence quiz for all of us and make the focal point of the questions like comic books and anime? (laughs) No, not like I'd put algebra in there. Probably. I don't know. Well, I'm going to win this shit then. See, this is why we'll never have the second bout because Jeff is a man without honor and he projects out on everybody else. Yes, that's right. Jeff, well, how about I make a practice test, and if you like that, I'll make like a real one. That's nothing but sure. anime quiz. I can help sure. you with a sports question. Um, hey, Jeff, what sport did the X Men play in X Men Prime number one? I don't basketball. know that one. It was not. It was baseball. Poop ball. Fucking hack. <laughs> I don't know shit about sports. <laughs> I'm making it up. Can't even tell the difference between basketball and baseball. Jesus, what a moron. I had no idea. <laughs> he gets confused by the balls. What's yeah. that one where you like uh you have to hit the ball with your foot? Kick, <laughs> is it kick kick ball? Kick That's ball. not a sport. You know that, Kevin. <laughs> or is it? I did have something I want Wait to bring second. up with you guys. There is a kickball, isn't there? Well, oh, I thought you were making a soccer game. joke. I mean, kickball I is a, <laughs> like a childhood game, I think. Yeah. I was yeah, going to say, if that's on the table, kickball. we got to call dibs. That's like, we wait a second. absolutely smoked in competitive kickball. That's like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Somebody didn't get tits.com? Fucking, someone go on GoDaddy right now. We have to get tits.com. Somehow... Tits? That didn't get snatched. What would you, you know, put on tits.com? Kickball's been around forever. Would you you never put, played kickball? I put just butts. Put butts. <laughs> yeah. See. <laughs> this is interesting, actually. So, Kevin, when people were playing kickball and oh. recess, what were you doing? Oh. Okay. Kickball is baseball where you kick a dodgeball. Yes. Am I close? Yes. Okay. Okay. Then, yeah. I, yep. You know what? I'm, I'm a stupid head. You really <laughs> thought that. Kickball wasn't a thing that we just thought up. Is that what just happened? I will concede I have lost the second round of the intelligence game. (laughs) (laughs) What is kickball? Oh, shit. (laughs) Okay, what about fistball? (laughs) Huh? Are you punching the ball? Think about (laughs) it. It's it's kickball, but instead (laughs) of them rolling it to you, it's thrown and you have to punch it. Like, if we just managed to snag a something ball that hasn't been invented yet, we could be the next FFL. Depending on the rules, fistball could be volleyball. And then we get... Yeah, or handball. <laughs> oh, there's a handball? But What's handball? Do? You, you smack the, the wall. ball with your hand. Yeah. It's, like, like, a, it's yeah. like racquetball, but with your hand instead of a racket. No, I think you can catch it and carry it for a few steps. 
What is it a big like ball? It's kind of it's kind of like a mix of basketball and soccer, as far I as I know, and it's an indoor sport. I don't Are think can... that's the same. That's not handball at all, Jeff. That sounds awful. Uh, it is. It, I'm almost fairly sure it's handball. We played it in high school for like I don't know. There was like a month of handball that we had to play. Some kind of and... Gen Z rules, though. No bobbling. Yeah, oh, know. okay. All right. That kind of, that. That wasn't yeah, the handball I was thinking of. <laughs> okay, taint ball. <laughs> ah, there's, there hasn't been a taint ball yet. That that works. We can do that. Are you, one. Are you gonna ball. like teabag ball. it? Like, what's the? How do you play taint ball, Kevin? Uh. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will concede. I have just lost the third round of the intelligence test. <laughs> Maybe like right, if somebody not... throws the ball and then you get a running start and you jump and lead with your feet, <laughs> but you do a split. You could like slide into it. Like you could like slide with your a leg bunch up. of broken elbows when they land. Oh yeah, it would have to be played on a giant like uh, a bounce when house when there's like a rain delay at a baseball game and they run out with that big sheet. You just oh. start with the big sheet, and then you spray it with soapy water. A oh. tarp. The taint tarp? ball is fucking coming. The taint FL. I don't think it's catching on. And then we're going to start uh, fantasy taint ball? Yes. Tell you what, the ghetto is not going to play taint ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, there will not be taint ball, pick up taint ball in the streets. Oh, you want to you piece me, bro? Put your money where your taint is. <laughs> <laughs> we can go taint one-on-one right now. Taint on taint. <laughs> Uh, well, Alex and Seek, you're joining us because you have a new venture, a new venture to yeah, promote, I... and I, I, it's a concept I enjoy. Oh, oh, yeah. that's, that's good to hear. At least you're someone our, likes you're it. You're our one view and one down vote. <laughs> Shuddy was telling us, though, before that he hated the concept, so I, mean, I, I also expected enjoy that it. fully, that that's Shuddy yeah. would hate it. If I'm being honest, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> you should have expected he's a, Kevin he's not to the hate third it. host. That's why he wants to be the third host. Um, we had actually, yeah, it was something that Alex, Alex, and I were brainstorming a couple things, and we were just like, man, in 2020, we didn't like. We talked from time to time, but like, we wanted to do something fun, c- considering we'll probably have another year of not seeing each other. So he was like, we should just do something on your YouTube channel. And we bounced a bunch of ideas back and forth. And then as we were planning and as I bought a bunch of comic books to get ready to do like a Thor show or, you know, like we were going to go through different comics. Like in the last second, Alex goes, do you have HBO Max? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, dude, why don't we just like hang out every week and just watch DC animated movies and talk over them? And I was like, oh yeah, that's an easy, that's a great idea. <laughs> so that's pretty much all it is. It's just like us hanging out on a, on um, a screen a stream yard call like this is, and we're just watching the movie and talking with each other in the chat while the yeah. movie's. It's like a commentary track, kind of. Pretty much, yeah. we, we just kind of go. We've gone through. Let's see, what have we gone through already? We've gone through Batman Ninja last week. Mm-hmm. So oh, you're not that, doing them in chronological order. No, you're no just... we're going back and forth. Like seek pick one, picks one, and then I pick one. Yeah. What did you guys think um, of Batman Ninja? Because I actually just watched that. Um, within the last couple of weeks, for the first time. What did you think, Seek? Like, let's start with your because well, we talked about it pretty extensively. Yeah, I had seen it before, so Alex was it was like his first time watching it. So, um, so I feel the same I did before, which is it's visually beautiful, but I feel like at the same time it's like it's just got one of the worst stories. <laughs> like, uh, I I kind of wish it was just uh, like an Elseworlds where where Batman where there was a Batman in feudal Japan. The, tr- the time travel stuff, I was like, why'd they do this? Why didn't they just have a guy in Japan be the Batman of feudal Japan as an Elseworlds? Um, I thought I thought that would have probably streamlined it a little bit more because it uh, the time travel thing made the story busy in an unnecessary way. But uh, visually, it's I thought it was awesome visually. Yeah, the animation yeah. on it's super cool. Yeah, it's really good. Story it's- wasn't the greatest. Um, I... I, f- I feel like it almost might have worked cooler as a comic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It would have been cool to see some of like the renditions, especially later in the movie. And not to give any spoilers, but there's it's a Japanese anime movie, is so you can kind of expect some mecha battles. Um, yeah. 
that's that's it, what I said. I, I said, you know, it's funny because this feels like a bunch of white people doing stereotypical Japanese things in this movie, but yet the whole crew was Japanese. And I was like, why would they just lean into the stereotypes and put giant robots and, uh, you know, and all the different things they put in that movie, like the different armors for Batman. Like, I'm like, man, they really like, uh, was it Bane is like a sumo wrestler. I'm like, yeah, why, yeah, why, why did they wrestler. lean into all of that? Uh, instead of like, it just, it felt like, it, it felt like they were just doing everything cliche. And I was comparing, there is a Batman book that's made by a Japanese artist called child of dreams. And that book is, is like, it just feels like a regular Batman book done by a Japanese guy but it doesn't feel like any cliches are in that story. This felt like every single cliche. And I was just like, man, that's so weird. The whole team's Japanese and they just did everything you would expect an, a, an American studio when they're making an anime to do. And the Japanese crew did it themselves. Yeah. See, that's yeah. why people got to check this out. Like if you want to watch some DC movies, you'll, you'll get all the inside info from Alex and C because they know their shit. These guys are like extensive comic book encyclopedias. At least the two of you combined. Yeah, we you're gonna like catch really most, most shit. Yeah, like Seek is like seventy five percent of the knowledge, and I'm like twenty five percent. And it's it's basically me reading all the things that Seek hates that he won't read. <laughs> like that's ninety percent of the things I have authority over. Where it's just Seek's like, oh, that's shit. I don't want to read that. And I'm like, I guess I'll read it to I'm like, I'm fill like, in the gaps. Yeah, I'm like, Alex, you still reading Donny Cates' indie books? He's like, yeah. And I go, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, t- I'm like talking about Jason Aaron's Avengers, and I'm like, oh yeah, they're doing this and this and this. And Seek's like, yeah, whatever. I haven't read that book in ten years. I'm just loading the gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I saw. I, I I remember being excited when that Batman Ninja thing was coming out. It's like, oh, cool, a Batman anime. That sounds pretty awesome. And then yeah. it comes out, and I, everybody's shitting on it, and it's getting really bad reviews. And I was like, ah, I'll get I'll, I'll get around to it eventually. And then I watched it on HBO Max, and it wasn't the greatest thing in the world. But when yeah. I got finished watching it, I was like, all right, I feel like people are a little harsh on that. It wasn't it wasn't that horrible. I'm glad I watched it. Alex, that's how I like, felt too. Yeah, he summed it up the best. What you called it? What'd you call it, Alex? Uh, I'm trying to remember what I said. I, I feel like it, oh, I feel like it was a movie that had a bunch of really cool battles that they built a story around. No. Yeah. You said it was someone's art project. Oh yeah. I said it felt more like, more like an animator's art project, something where a bunch of animators got together and were like, who gives a shit what the story is? Let's just make the biggest, coolest, weirdest thing that's like the most animation wise impressive thing we can do yeah like we'll give red hood a long he- head and then like helmet and we'll give uh a, a shogun mask or an oni mask half of it to two-face like it was like they came up with all that first and then we're like all right how do we get all these characters in the story and they go i don't know gorilla grod who gives a shit <laughs> like this is a this is a deep cut but if anyone's seen flcl or it's commonly referred to as fooly cooly it's think? like a f- oh, oh yeah it's like a yeah. It's like a five episode anime and it's just a bunch of like low level animators each getting like 10 minutes to direct. And the story makes no sense, but the animation style is super cool and different like every 10 or so minutes because it's someone different in charge. Right. And it's and it felt kind of like that. It felt like a bunch of people throwing like their biggest wildest ideas on screen. That sounds like anime improv. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like anime improv. I think that's a good way to say yeah. it. All right, somebody give me a profession. All right, now give me some tentacles. All right, go. <laughs> yeah, I did ask uh, to Shuddy's question earlier. I asked Alex if he wanted to go in order, but he was really adamant about starting with Justice League versus Teen Titans, which is like the eighth movie into the series or ninth movie. So I was like, yeah, okay, cool. I don't care if we go in order or not. So eventually, what I'll do is I'll make a playlist and I'll put them in order. And that, you know, we could just do it that way. Are you guys yeah, eventually just... going to do that um, that awful Harley Quinn one we all watched together? <laughs> Unfortunately, oh God, I'm dreading it. Yeah, it'll be at the end probably. That was um, so bad. Like that I, one and Killing Joke. Two I feel so bad. bad because Kevin, every time we, you and I and Seek have ever watched a DC animated movie, <laughs> we've always watched the worst one. Yeah, so <laughs> bad. That like, Harley Quinn one. And you feel like this would be right up my alley, but she's like eating burritos and farting and talking about diarrhea. And I'm like, 
All right. Is this a is this like a DC movie or are we watching Beavis and Butthead here? This is ridiculous. And then these fucking yeah, two like, goons bust out and do like a five minute music video karaoke thing in the middle of it. I was like, what? And then you Nothing look online and people sense. are like, oh, this is such a great animated movie. Oh, you guys got fucking you guys are easy to please. Please rate and, and subscribe to my podcast. <laughs> Yeah, that one's terrible. It's so weird because, like, Teen Titan, like Justice League vs. Teen Titans, the first one we did, I love that movie. I think that's one of the coolest stories. I, th- I think that's the best DC animated movie out there. And to see the quality shift between them is so weird, especially even when a lot of them have the same directors and creative teams. Yeah, one of the directors, uh, he follows me on Twitter and he's uh, he's a big fan of my reviews when I used to, cause I've reviewed most of these animated movies before those episodes are just been deleted off my YouTube channel. So, uh, so now he'll like, he'll like, Hey, I watched your episode the other day. He's like, I love what you guys said about my show. And I'm like, cool, man. And uh, so it's kind of neat to see the guy who made half of these DC animated movies actually watching, you know, our videos, which is kind of cool. Nice. Yeah. So what's the, what's the third one you guys did? Oh, we did well. Uh, well, yeah. What was the second one we did, Alex? It was we did... the uh, r- the Batgirl one. The yeah, Mystery of the Batwoman. Mystery of the Batwoman. Yeah, it, which is an older one. Do you it's guys from, have like the Batman like two thousands animated series? It's like a yeah. It's it's a continuation of the Bruce Tim animated series, but it came out in like two thousand one or two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what do you guys have lined up for episode four? Deathstroke, the Deathstroke animated movie. Oh, yeah. It's uh, what's it called? Demons and Dragons. Yeah, it's like dragons and something. Yeah, I've never seen it. Or knights and dragons. Yeah, I've never knights seen knights and dragons. It. I've seen it. It's the, one of the few I've seen that he hasn't. So we're I'm kind of excited. Yeah, I I rented it, and my rental I didn't get the chance to watch it till the next night when I got home from work, and it only played for twenty minutes, and then my rental expired, oh, <laughs> and man. I was like, oh shit! So I didn't get to see the rest of the movie. But it's written by one of my favorite writers, who actually I got on the my Venom blog podcast. Um, J.M. De- uh, Demetrius, who's the writer of Craven's oh. Last Hunt. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. And he wrote an episode of one of the recent Spider-Man cartoons. So he you know, came on my show and we talked about it and talked about Venom and stuff. And he did an episode with Moon Knight in the cartoon. So we talked about Moon Knight. But um, he told me he plugged that movie and I was like, I got to watch it. And then I never got to finish it. So so we're going to watch that on Thursday. Nice. Yeah. So the whole Venom vlog thing took off when it was things were leading up to the Venom movie with Tom Hardy. And you were just like scouring for for clues and insider tips and hints, <laughs> and it got a it got a decent amount of traction, right? And you've just kept yeah, it I mean, rolling right now because now they're planning Venom too. Well, yeah, it's it's funny because uh, yeah, the show picked up when I went and saw Venom the first one like a week or so or two before it came out, and Tom Hardy was there, so we watched the movie with Tom Hardy, and then afterwards he hung out with us signed all of our stuff and then he did an intro for my youtube channel nice. um, and then like a couple days later oh, uh pat yeah pat oswald was like tweeting like hey i'm gonna interview the cast of venom tweet me your questions so i tweeted him a question for michelle williams well he picked it and so he shouted out my podcast on the live on their like premiere interview nice. thing and so that picked up traction and then when the second movie came out um, a year ago, like last week, I was on the set of Venom 2 when they were filming it in San Francisco. And it was one of the last things I did in California before I left. Um, so I got, you know, went up to the set and got to hang out for like 12 hours and, and just hang out and watch everything happen um, and saw a bunch of cool stuff. And uh, and so I made a video the other night where we celebrated the one year anniversary of me being on set. But the movie was supposed to come out last October. So it's funny that it's been a year since I've been on set and we still don't even have a trailer for the movie. And a lot of people are wondering if it's actually going to come out in June or if they're going to push it back again because they just pushed Morbius back till next January. So now people are worried that Venom will get pushed back to 2022. So my channel was on the incline, but without uh, without any movie news, it's it's kind of leveling off right now until the movie news starts popping up. So is this like some... Is it is the movie finished and it's just delayed because they want to put it in theaters they don't want to put it on a streaming thing well sony doesn't have a streaming service so they kind of are trying to yeah they're trying to dedicate themselves to being the 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 studio that still wants to put stuff in a theater so like when warner brothers recently hbo max said everything's going to theaters and hbo max on the same day that pissed off a lot of directors yeah so sony was like 
Sony's like, hey, if you guys want to make movies that are guaranteed to go to theaters, come to us and we'll make that happen. So Sony's trying to play that role and not do the streaming thing. So yeah, there, there's been talks of possibly of delays and stuff. So, uh, but you know, I'm excited for this second one because one, we finally get to see Carnage on the live, you know, in, in live action, um, played by Woody Harrelson, who I'm a big fan of. And it's also directed by Andy Serkis. So I'm really curious to see what the visuals look like because I imagine the CGI will be a lot better this time around with him, you know. Who played Carnage the first time? It was Woody, Woody Harrelson. Harrelson. Yeah, it was it's like in the, the end. extra credit scene or the post credit yeah. scene. Yeah. It's got like a oh, big like clown wig on almost. Yeah, he's wearing like a Ronald McDonald clown wig. I don't remember this. How many years ago was this at this point? It's about three now. Yeah, it's like 2018. Yeah, October. It came out on my birthday actually on yeah. in October 4th. Yep. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I feel like I should know this. I, I actually like Carnage and Venom and Spider-Man. Where like like that, that was like the one like cartoon arc. Um, yep. One of the few that I was really into. Like I really I watched Spider-Man, the Spider-Man cartoon, the X-Men growing up. Nice. It was like the those those are my shit. So I was interested. Uh, Topher Grace of the first Venom, right? And that yeah. one not that good. Yeah. And I thought I read or I heard. And like a podcast or maybe my brother talking about a podcast that he didn't even feel like he should have been cast for that. So I'm excited to see the whole, the Tom, Ar- uh, Tom Hardy shit, but yeah. I didn't know Woody Harrelson was going to be carnage. I feel like I should have known that. Cause that is something comic book related that I could be into. And I'd be excited about. Yeah. Woody Harrelson's the man too. He's awesome. Yeah. He's a G. Yeah. That he is. Um, <laughs> fuck. You know, I was, you mentioned Sony doesn't have a streaming service. And I was like, yeah. holy shit. I never even thought about Like, there are so many streaming things now. It's almost beating a dead horse to, to point that out. And, you know, the um, Paramount, that was that was the one that was getting promoted like, like mad during the Super Bowl and shit, right? Right, yeah. Oh, Paramount has one now? What's that? Is it just called Paramount Plus, I think? They're all yeah. just Plus now. Yeah, they're Plus. Yeah. But I saw I saw a billboard for it, and I saw that they're gonna have Comedy Central, and then like my palms started sweating. I was like, "Oh no, don't please don't take fucking South Park off of HBO Max." Uh, I am yeah. very much enjoying just putting on old South Park episodes on HBO Max. Uh, I mean, it's crazy to think that they have all the original audio, like going back to the first season, like all that stuff is unbleeped. Yeah, yeah. There's like one or two here and there. I don't know what happened with those, but they really saved all their old cuss words in an audio <laughs> bin somewhere. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Those guys are awesome. Yeah. And while I love South Park, I really like the older ones the best. I don't know, yeah, Jeff, because yeah. I, Jeff, I know you're a diehard South Park fan, but like before it started... like Getting like episodic... Yeah, when they would string along like a, a three episode story arc or tackling the um topic du jour. Back when, you know, Mephisto, the the Doctor Moreau character was was running around cloning people and stuff, and it just it felt like contained within South Park. Right. Yeah, like the, the episode where like fucking Cartman gets an alien stuck up his ass or something. Well yeah, that's like episode one right yeah is that oh is yeah. that that early first, yeah i didn't even one. remember that i thought it was like a, the only thing before like that was pretty early. early the jesus <laughs> santa fight was the only thing before that oh yeah yeah they're like they're they're uh proof of concept or whatever yeah 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 i still love the episode where they have muhammad in a bear suit <laughs> i think those are the only ones they don't have on on streaming anywhere anything that uh-huh. has muhammad they they pull those like for eternity wow Yep. Oh, I have I have them on a hard drive. <laughs> the one where Randy Marsh says the N word is honestly like the the <laughs> best thirty minutes of television ever. Like it, uh, I love like that episode. I think is like on the Mount Rushmore of TV episodes. Honestly, uh, I don't remember what season it's in. I season watched it 10. recently, and I remember like because somebody was trying to tell me that it was based on a real thing, and I'm like, no, it isn't. There's no fucking way. It's not based. Nobody said the N word on Wheel of Fortune. That just did not happen. <laughs> Mistakenly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I actually did Wikipedia because I've put my foot in my mouth so many times at this point. It's like, ah, I know it's not true, but I'll just Google it to be safe. That episode got 
all these accolades. It's not only on your Mount Rushmore, Jeff. Like, like, uh, oh, really? I, should, I should probably look it up right now, but like all these like black, black African American organizations like praised it as like very progressive. <laughs> they're like, yeah, they're like uh-huh. it's funny and it's silly. But like, if you really look at what they're saying with this episode, it's like, it's very profound. Yeah. So like, oh, for sure. Yeah. Like it, not only is but, it just hysterical and like you watch it, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> but it actually got praised by a lot of progressive organizations for its underlying tones. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like that, uh, that movie, the ringer that got endorsed by the special Olympics. <laughs> oh my God. The Johnny Knoxville one. <laughs> yeah. Did it? Oh, I guess they yeah, had got- to, if they used it in the movie. Yeah. They, 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 yeah. The, the special Olympics was like, we're okay with how this represents us. <laughs> Man, I forgot about that movie. That's another <laughs> yikes. Yeah, another wasn't one that there, could be made today. Wasn't there? I think it's the same episode. The other storyline though was Cartman fighting the little person, right? The, the, the was that the oh, same the episode? Substitute teacher. The I one he's trying was. to like get him to understand, like, be like a compassionate person or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's the same one, right? Yeah, and he ends and up just they, fighting they fight him. Fight to the soundtrack or to the song "Down with the Sickness." Oh my <laughs> god, dude! I, I was crying when I was watching that. Uh, I, I mean, I like all the eras of South Park. I, I'm not that picky. I, I think the newer stuff is. I, I just like the sharpness of it, and I like the like they do it the week of, and I just mm. find it like fascinating. They're able to do that and. Yeah, that documentary, the the week making of South Park thing, that's super fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was interesting. They had like that was the one where Bill Hader was in the writing room, I think. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I had a gun to my head, I would say like the newer stuff. I just like, I, I just like its sharpness. I, but they also have the the the, the old school goofy stuff where they do that here or there. Like the PC principal shit is just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if they, if they take that off HBO Max, I I know that this is like this is the golden rule because every time I say it, it bites me in the ass. But I'm I'm not getting another streaming service. I can't fucking do it. <laughs> Out of all of the ones you guys have, which one's your favorite? Like, if you had to go down to one, what would you go down to? Wow, oh, wow. Sophie's choice of streaming. Yeah, like services. if you if you had to Sophie's choice, <laughs> no, that's going to be thrown <laughs> to the Nazis. <laughs> what streaming service would you save? I probably watch Hulu the most. Hmm. I'm I'm really always sunny. pretty pretty even with them. Like mm. I've been watching. Uh, I watch a lot of anime on Netflix now, and they seem to get some of the best straight to streaming movies. Um, I just went binged like a shitload of Akira Kurosawa samurai movies and stuff oh. on HBO Max, yeah. and then South Park. Like I was saying, I signed up for Peacock when I cut cable, mm-hmm. and you know the they they do recut episodes of Parks and Rec, so I I just. Parks and Rec in the office have always been my background show. Like, I can put them on if I'm working, if I'm sending emails, if I'm trying to fall asleep. But they recut a ton of Parks and Rec episodes. There's there's one episode in the later seasons. They added so many scenes, it's almost an hour now. Oh, my God. Dang. And The Office... That's really cool. The Office on Peacock, season three, they call, like... Um, fuck, I forget what they call them. Like, fan size episodes or something like that. But they they re-edited in all of the deleted scenes to all of season three. Well, that's pretty cool. And just to like there have are, the extra content in there. Yeah, and I, I guess they're gonna eventually do it to every season of The Office. But the, um, Peacock also has channels, so I also watch a fuckload of Bob Ross. Because <laughs> nice. if I'm ever just wound up too tight, I put on the Bob Ross channel, and it's just like ah. Oh. You know Have what? you ever tried to paint? Everything's gonna be okay. First ASM artist, <laughs> dude. It's it's crazy. Like I was looking at his Wikipedia. Yeah. Because like it, it's it, like I remember being incredibly bummed as a kid when he died, and like just thinking about how long Bob Ross has been gone. It's like fuck. He had so much more to give. 
that wonderful, beautiful man. How did he die? Cancer. He was a dick in real life. Oh, come on. Shane. How, do, how do you know that? I don't. I was I'm just, <laughs> I, I haven't said anything in a while. So I figured I just needed to nice. contribute something. Well done. Uh, that was a good usage of, of words. I wish that I was there with you. But he, I, yeah, I he, he kept it like secret. He didn't tell anybody about it. He just went on doing the show and died like shortly after his, his final season. Kind but, of like um, Chadwick Boseman. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, a throwback. Damn, he Irish goodbyed everyone. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. The ultimate Irish goodbye. The ultimate, yeah. yeah, right. The final Irish goodbye. Fuck, I forgot what I was what I learned on his Wikipedia. Either way, Alex, to answer your question, I've started sketching again recently. And my Ooh. family wants to do paint night over Zoom. We're gonna do like painting classes over Zoom together. Yeah. Just to find ways to, to be together when we're apart. So I am gonna get like a starter kit of oil paints and I might try it out, like set a camera up and film me painting along to a Bob Ross episode and That would be dope. See how it turns out and put it up on Patreon because I've said this maybe recorded, but off air a bunch that my ultimate pitch is to have a stoner host a show where he has a different guest on every week. They get stoned and then they put on an episode of the joy of painting with Bob Ross and they have all the paints, everything set up like he does and they paint along with them. And then at the end of the half hour, they compare to see who got the closest. (laughs) Why are we not adding? Uh Oh, Oh no, everybody's frozen. That means it's me. Check, check, check. Oh, no. My fucking internet probably went out. Oh! Oh! That was weird! What the hell was that? I think one of those alternate uh, galaxies just opened up and swallowed us. It changed all of our clothes. (laughs) Except for Jeff. I just put a hat on him. (laughs) Yeah. They just accessorized my look, the universe. (laughs) Yeah, my, uh, my internet just actually... All of Spectrum in Los Angeles exploded. So, we've had it. We've had to stop recording due to internet glitches before, but they were only momentary, never complete and total internet blackout. Yeah, we've never faced the epic bitch assness that is Spectrum, the fucking monopoly here in Studio City. I, I can't get anything else in my building. Sometimes so, having I'm Alex stuck. and I on it just shuts uh, internet down. So it's, it's too much. Because you're too sexy. We break yeah. the internet. Yeah, we break the internet. <laughs> we're we're actually what's consistently in Kim Kardashian's butt that gives her that curve. It's just us sitting in there. Yeah, yeah we're just a sack of potatoes. Yeah. Speaking of which, R.I.P. Uh, Kim K. and Kanye's relationship. Kim yeah. K. is back in the market, though. I want to bury my face in that ass. Who saw that coming? <laughs> I thought I thought those two were destined to die alone or die together. Uh, old old hags. Well, yeah. for all being honest here, Kevin, we didn't think it was going to last this long. That's true. So, well, it well. I mean, if, it, it hit the over. If, <laughs> What's your, your name? I just saw it. <laughs> Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> That's not how I spell my name. I'm over. late to the game. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm late to the game, too. If you didn't say anything, I just would have sat here with a Jeffrey Epstein tag. <laughs> I mean, I'm still going to just sit here with it because I don't really... <laughs> feel like or know how to change it but i'm pretty sure shuddy yeah, just j- just changed your zoom name to jeffrey i did Epstein. as soon as he yeah <laughs> as soon as we were getting into it i was waiting for that moment <laughs> i had a like a like kind of a business meeting somewhat uh a, a zoom call like conference call oh guys i'm stuck my, as a cat <laughs> i'm <laughs> it it like saved my name as the dragon so Every, like that's all anyone knew of me. It was like our, it was like an icebreaker call, like on this new team, sports betting team that I'm working on. And it gave me like a little, like I stood out a little bit during the meeting. That was nice. Not that it really like matters to how much I get paid or anything like that. But I don't know. I'm just, I'm now I'm nervous that it's going to say Jeffrey Epstein next time I, I have a, no, a, no, a, a, no. A when you log in, it'll go back to normal. It'll God. go back to normal. Don't I don't be- want to be Jeffrey Epstein after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's got to be more than one Jeffrey Epstein in the world. Like, I'm sure there's some Kevin Spacey walking around right now like, no! 
Fuck. You think no, like like multi people, Michael Bolton from Office Space. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. People who like realize they have bad famous names like that. Do you think they constantly put like no relation in quotations? He's like, call me Jeff. I we imagine... had a yeah. They probably do have to remind people. But... Do you for think there's jobs a William Cosby weird. out there that puts in parentheses? Not that one. Not that one. <laughs> oh yeah, you definitely will go by William if or, or like wait oh wait yeah William Cosby really? yeah. Um, Kev really? Kev Spacey, <laughs> remember when uh, Go by your we name. recently had a shuddy news story about this African politician named Adolf Hitler? Remember that? Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like well. Adolf was a name that never caught on big in Africa from the dawn of time, especially post Adolf Hitler. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mean I, I can't. I wouldn't anticipate a lot of Germans naming their kids off of Adolf. Yeah. Especially after they lost that war. Well, I mean, I, I feel like uh, the the internet going out yesterday may have been a good thing because I was sort of just fucking babbling myself in circles and off on a tangent. And we actually do have some, some shit to get to. Some fun stuff, some stuff that I wanted to throw out. This is a, a nerd thing that I feel like interests the entire panel. All five of us can get down with the fact that the trailer for the new Mortal Kombat movie got released. I oh, yeah. actually hadn't seen it. Haven't uh, seen it. Not hadn't. Haven't. Oh. oh, it's fucking sick. Have you seen it, Jeff? Yeah, I saw it. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to pull it off. Like, the story, I guess it's just, it doesn't have to be that complicated, right? But no. It doesn't even have the, to be the, good. The trailer looks sweet. Like, yeah, there, so- there is the chance that... They had like three cool ideas in the entire movie, and they just put those three cool ideas in the trailer. But I mean, Sub Zero is the bad guy, so it's basically just people trying to get Sub Zero, I suppose. But the the part where him and Scorpion are fighting, and he slashes Scorpion, and his blood flies out, and he freezes the blood into a dagger and stabs him with his own frozen blood. If they have ideas like that in the in that movie, I don't care how fucking stupid it is. I don't care what the plot is. Like, I, I see. Were you? You strike me as somebody who might have seen Mortal Kombat, the '90s one, most recently. Am I off base there? Um. Well, I was actually. So I put up my trailer reaction the other day, and then Alex and I did our own trailer reaction later on in our show that same day. My mom watched one of them, and she said, "Oh, I took you to see the first Mortal Kombat the day it came out." She's like, "That was that and Street Fighter were like your two of your favorite games when you were a kid." Um, so yeah, I think a couple years ago I watched the 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 '90s one and the sequel, like back to back, and uh, oh, so it is a little feature. bit. Yeah, so it's it's a little fresher in my mind. Um, How's it hold up? I mean, I can't compare it to what I felt when I was a kid, but I thought it was for a Paul W. S. Anderson movie. I was like, hey, this is actually not bad. He does okay um, from time to time. He every once in a while he gets one, and so I was like, hey, yeah, this isn't bad. And for a movie that was PG thirteen for such a mature rated game, I got to give it credit. Like you barely notice because the movie has a lot of great fights in it. Yeah. They got to work that song in. It did have an awesome soundtrack. It has like one of the best, if not the best fear factory song ever recorded. Yes. Yes. Zero signal. Zero signal. But yeah, I'm pumped for that. And I'm very disappointed in Shuddy. I'm pretty excited for it too. It's one of those movies that I feel like should be built around the fights. Like you want the fights to be good. You don't give a shit about the story. Right. Yeah. And I'm excited. I hope they do that. Like I, I really hope there's just the dopest ass mortalities. It's an R rated movie, right? Mm-hmm. Get them to the arena or to the Island as fast as fucking possible. 100%, <laughs> like hundred percent with Jeff. Let's get to the Kumite. Just you know what? Just title card the origin story. Just just, just, <laughs> just do it in a title card in the first like yeah. three minutes, like a Star Wars uh, crawl. Like a, yeah, like a, a they learned yeah. martial perfect. arts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect. Yes, they all practiced <laughs> fighting, and now they're really good, and they could kill people. Well, we were, we were Let's talking go. about that because I saw the interview where the director said Sub Zero is the main villain, but yet Shang Tsung and some and Melina and other characters and, and Goro. Kong, they show Goro in the trailer. Yeah, and they show Goro. So I'm thinking there's probably going to be an a and b story and the a story will probably be whoever this new guy is like trying to 
hunt down Sub Zero, and he's probably tied into Scorpion somehow. And then there's probably the Mortal Kombat tournament at the same time. So that's what I'm kind of thinking is like there's a personal story being told and the tournament story, which I'm like, you don't have to complicate this. <laughs> just just throw them all in a room and have them fight each other. Like it <laughs> literally show scenes where brackets are like versus versus, and then like someone wins and they move to the next bracket. Yeah, like, that's all I care about. Yeah, like that's I think what anyone wants from this movie, like two hours of that. And yeah. also, finally, nudalities. Yes. What? <laughs> you know, did you remember? Just watch about... the trailer. Do you it remember? Looks fucking rad. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That fight at the end of the trailer between Sub Zero and Scorpion looks fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care how stupid the dialogue is. If they, if the action, I is hope like they that... didn't blow their load in the trailer though. And they have the guy from uh, the guy who's playing Sub Zero was from The Raid, which I love that movie. Oh, is that yeah. Iko Awasi? <laughs> no, the other guy who played uh, his. Uh, oh, was the brother? Cop. The cop. Oh, the cop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something as Taslim. Joe, Joe Taslim. Yeah, Joe Taslim. And the guy who plays ah. uh, Scorpion yeah. is uh, Hiroyuki Sonata. Yeah. Who I feel like you might not know his name, but he's like one of those Japanese character actors where when you see him, like you see that guy's face, you're like, oh, I know that guy. Oh, that guy's fucking awesome. He was in The Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I like I'm, that guy. He's, he's like the bad guy from the. He's like an Asian bad guy from the mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the haircut I'm looking for. Actually, that's kind of what I'm efforting towards. So, nice. did you guys like? I remember when Mortal Kombat Two came out, the arcade at the Rockaway Mall in Jersey. There were dudes that would sell printouts of moves, so you could get like combos, fatalities. Uh, the stage yeah. fatalities. Oh, and, they'd sell you like cheat sheets? Yeah. So like you would be playing against some guy and he'd fucking whoop your ass. And then he would do... Because Mortal Kombat 2 is when they introduced multiple fatalities per per character. And like someone did like a second fatality on me. I'm like, what the fuck? That's not his <laughs> fatality. Where'd that come from? And he would just smile and be like, yeah, bro. Rad, right? <laughs> and then some fucking guy is standing in the corner of the arcade by the change machine in an overcoat, like, Psst, kid, kid, I got cheats. And he opens up his coat, like, oh, let me fucking get those, man. That's 10 bucks, dude. 10 bucks, little man. You give him the 10 bucks, you get the cheat sheet. A couple weeks go by, you get all the fatalities down, you get the combos down. Now there's some fucking new guy standing by the change machine. He's like, hey, I got the ultra sec- secret cheat sheet. And this fucking guy's got, like, friendships. And babe allergies and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm turning people into babies and shit, blowing people's minds. Then a couple weeks go by, and there's a fucking new guy standing at the change machine. He's like, hey, I got I got more cheat sheets. I got more moves. 20 bucks for this one. And I give him the 20 bucks. It says there's fucking nude allergies on there. I must have gone to the arcade every day for a week trying these nude allergies. I'm like, I can't get it. No such thing. That's a good grift. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that third guy was Ed Boone. <laughs> and the first guy was uh, Jason me? Hughes. <laughs> I know that guy. I don't know what the fuck Ed Boone means, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the creator of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> this, is that, that, this is like when I uh, make a sports reference and just, <laughs> Kevin just sits there like. Like, cool. yeah, Ed Boon, right? Oh, uh, yeah, totally. Ed Boon. Yeah, that's that's funny. Yeah, deep cut, Seek. <laughs> Man, what kind of idiot wouldn't know exactly what that reference is? <laughs> um, well, speaking of games, would you guys like to play one? Yes, Yay! let's. Hey, sure. I gotta. Letterbox D, Letterbox Shut D. up, Jeff. It's Letterbox D. The D stands for dicks. It's the Letterbox D game. So, we are going to be playing a special edition of the Letterbox D game. This was an idea thought up by Alex Wilson, passed on to me, and this might level the playing field a little bit because anybody who has heard this game played before knows that Jeff gets his <laughs> ass stomped every time he plays it. <laughs> The only time he's ever gotten a win or scored points is when it's severely handicapped. And like, all right, Jeff, yeah, I, 
If you name me hit off the girls tee. Yeah. When we're like, okay, winner takes all whoever gets highest on the list. Yeah, it's like it's like um, in Gets SNL when they would wins. do Celebrity Jeopardy, and they're like, and Alex Trebek's like, just write a letter, any no, any letter, and you win. <laughs> like Jeff, like, if you write, can name write three. Yeah, if you can name a movie or an actor, you win. <laughs> oh. Last final answer is wins. No one can answer except for Jeff. <laughs> those are my rules. That's how I win. Yeah, but I like Jeff's chances a little more with this go around. So what we're gonna do is this is a strictly Marvel edition of okay. Letterbox D. But so, every Marvel movie has been removed. Oh. So all the answers will be the highest ranking movie that is not a Marvel movie. Okay. All right. That's fair. Yeah. Um, this hopefully goes better than the Paul W S Anderson and the Paul Thomas Anderson edition <laughs> that that you try you tried to have Jeff and I play. Yeah, you, I found quickly I can't go very deep at all with any sort of theme with Letterbox D because it'll go right over both Jeff and Shuddy's head. Do comic book movies still count? Like, if it's even not a Marvel movie, anything that's not Marvel counts. Okay. Just no Marvel, no Avengers, no Spider-Man, nothing like that. But DC Comics is cool, right? It is. There's not okay, much just, crossover. Just checking because there's a major difference, and I don't really want to get into it between the <laughs> Marvel and DC universe, but it's it's huge, and it's not something I want to – I think Jeff, we should be taking you're such lightly. a nerd. It's just comic books. Jesus. Uh, all right, well, whatever. It's, it's my passion. So Superman gonna... <laughs> doesn't know Spider-Man? What? <laughs> <laughs> all right uh sorry i was just prepping my notes real quick um okay so just for the the sake of fairness let's start with jeff yeah let me get three guesses first actually. <laughs> <laughs> and jeff gets to make a guess then listen to all of us make a guess and then take any one of our answers <laughs> yes. that he feels is better than his so seek <laughs> I don't know it's if you're like familiar. A, with... Go ahead, it's Jeff. like a one of those secret Santas where you can snag the person in front of you's gift, like right. white elephant or whatever. Yeah, that's it, white elephant. You're like, oh, I don't like this shitty gift. I want your good gift, and they have to trade with you. Yeah, you it's 2021, to... Shuddy. Why is it got to be white? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's kind of a dad joke. Let's let's play. Let's play. The... <laughs> All right, so people not familiar. Letterboxd is a movie app, and it has a very interesting way of ranking an actor's movies when you pull up their profile. And I'm pretty sure it goes by list, but I have found instances where the person's number one movie didn't appear on as many lists as their number two movie. So it's still kind of up in the air of how they list the movie popularities when you filter by actor. Um, but if you get if you name their most popular movie, you get three points. Second most popular, two points. Third most popular, one point. And that's it. And once a movie has been chosen, it is off the table. You can't double up on the same movie. All right, so Jeff, we're going to start with Iron Man himself, Robert Downey Jr. What do you think his number one movie is on IMDb? Or IMDb Letterbox D. That's not a Marvel movie. Mm. Robert? Downey. It's kind of crazy. I'm Junior. like stumbling to think of another Robert Downey Jr. I have one. I, I man, why am I? I'm blanking here. I, I'll just go with Sherlock Holmes. It's the only other one I could think of. Okay. Uh, we'll go to Seek next. Um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. All right, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yeah. Alex, what is your guess? Tropic Thunder. Oh, shit. Good pull. Good Good pull. Shuddy, what do you got? I remember that. Jeff took what I was going to say. Uh, So I am just going to throw a random dart and pick a movie that's very close to my heart and say Weird Science. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Forgot he was in that. That's a good one, too. That's a good guess. I love that movie. Yeah. 
All right, well, coming in at number three for one point is Sherlock Holmes. Oh! I'm on the board. Jeff is officially on the board. I'm going to write this down. Coming in at number two, which has been a while since I've seen this, and I didn't even realize he was in it, The Nice Guys? Oh, Oh. Is that with Goslin? Yeah. Yeah. The Shane Black movie. Yeah. Yeah. But Shane Black did Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised Kiss Kiss Bang Bang wouldn't be higher than that. Maybe it's number one. I did not remember him being in that movie. Yeah. But I don't either, I guess. Letterbox D has spoken, I suppose. (laughs) And coming in at number one is Zodiac. 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 He's in Zodiac. I don't. That's even That's absolutely that. terrible. Yeah, I rem- I love that movie. He's I, the main Tropic- character. He's the reporter. That's right. He Man, is. I haven't seen Zodiac in since college. Jeez. It was an ensemble movie. Pre. That's a Clark classic. <laughs> I'll have you know. I've seen that movie probably ten times. Uh, and the honorable mentions, Alex, you were just one away. Tropic Thunder was number four, and Ooh, then Chef, really? and then Sherlock Holmes too. I want to give you my point, Alex, because your answer was cooler than mine. <laughs> I'll, I'll split it with you. We'll take half a point each. See, this is how Jeff never wins. He just gives away his points when he gets <laughs> I want to keep you on the board, Jeff. I can't <laughs> let you get off the board when you just I'm, got on. What can I say? I'm a letterbox D socialist. I want everyone to win here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So changing up the rotation, we're going to start with Seek on this one. And the actor in question is Chris Evans. Oh, um, non-Marvel movie. What do you think his most popular is on Letterbox D? I'll go last. I'll nominate myself to go last. In the rotation, right. you are going last. That's how oh, it God. goes, Jeff. Good job. <laughs> uh, Chris, Perfect. Chris Evans um, was not another teen movie? He was in that. Okay, that one. In that. That's the only one I can think of. <laughs> All right, guess. Alex, what's your guess? Shetty, go first. I'm still thinking. No, I don't want to go first because what I'm going to choose is going to be based on if you, I have two based on which one you don't take. Oh, but, I'm so doing the same thing. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, you're getting um, fucked by the rotation, Alex. You got to go. Shit. Uh, I'm sorry. Those are the rules of the letterbox D game. Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim. Oh. Good choice. He is one of the seven evil X's. That's right. He's, and he's my favorite in that one. It's not uh, a Marvel movie. It is a comic book movie, but not a Marvel movie. Yeah, he he does have one of my favorite lines when like he's just walking away checking his phone and he's like <laughs> That's yeah. actually quite hilarious. <laughs> Such a good douchebag in that. Yeah. He's he's yeah, he's just hysterical. All right, Shuddy, did that help you at all? It did because that was one of the choices. And my other one is I'm going to take because it is now a show. So I'm going to see if that maybe did anything and go with Snowpiercer. Good one, Shuddy. That was the other one I was thinking too. Yeah. (laughs) Between Scott Pilgrim and Snowpiercer, I'm like, Alex has to pick one of those two. And it's Bong Joon Ho. I was like, hmm. We always have to remind people Letterbox D is pretentious and Bong Joon Ho did Snowpiercer. He's very hot these days. So it's a good good, good choice, Shuddy. That is a great choice, Shuddy. All right, Jeffrey Epstein, we're now to you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll say something no one else has said, even though I haven't seen this movie, and I'm so buttered how it was ruined for me. But I'll go Knives Out. Oh, that's a good oh. one. He's, he's in that, right? Yes, yep. he, he is. is in that. Yeah. He is in that. Another great wow. one, Jeff. Another that's great douchebag. Great- Great yeah. guess. Well, I don't know. I haven't seen it, but you should watch it. It's very good. Yeah, I've seen it twice, and watching it the second time, even knowing how the movie plays out, it was still fucking great. So enjoyable. Yeah, great movie. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. See, we're not spoiling anything. Okay. Just yeah. rec- highly recommending it. Yeah, it's on Prime yeah. right now too. I think for free. If, you, if you're a Prime at... member, I think it's streaming. Sweet. Uh, okay, so. Chris Evans, coming in at number six of his non-Marvel movies, is not another teen movie. (laughs) Yes! Fucking idiot. (laughs) I fucking love that movie. That movie is so goddamn funny. Um, And then a movie called Gifted at number five. And number four was Sunshine. 
Um, and oh, then, yeah, coming in at number three for one point, Shuddy Boy got it. Snowpiercer. Oh, bam. So that means Alex is two and Jeff is one. We shall see. Because coming in at number two is Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Oh. oh. A not only is that a five dicker craft classic, but it is on my Mount Rushmore. It is in my top five. That's an amazing movie. Uh, so, Alex, you are on the board with two points. Excited to be here. Shuddy, you have one. Seek's got a goose egg. <laughs> and Jeff, you now have four points because his number one movie is Knives Out. Ooh, look at that, Jeff. Not only that, but Knives Out beats all of the Marvel movies without them being removed. Oh, really? Damn. Yeah. It's that popular. It's more so popular it's on number Letterboxd. one on the board. Yes. Number one completely. Wow. So Jeff is trying to we finagle bonus points for that. Well I'm it, not, but that's a great idea. You should let him because there's a the chance he might just give them to you, Shuddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shuddy, you don't need any you don't have any points, so you might need I them. have one motherfucker. Oh, all right. Whatever. Lucky bitch. All right. Um Alex, we're gonna start with you. Okay. Now running to, through the roster of the Avengers. We land at Thor, Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. What do you think his most popular non-Marvel movie is on Letterboxd? Oh, man. I'm I couldn't name it. another Chris Hemsworth non-Marvel movie, I don't think. I have two in my head. I'm going with the one I just think is better, and it's newer, that Extraction movie from Netflix. Okay. That was the only one I had, Alex. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Shetty. Do you want me to text you one? <laughs> I thought of one other. Man, this really is like Letterbox D, the AOC edition. <laughs> yeah. She's got a bunch of socialists on her hands. Do you need help? Do you need help, oh, Shetty? Fuck. We're all gonna rise. <laughs> what else has he been in other than Thor and the Avengers movies? He's got stuff. He's got. I'm stuff. sure he does. Seek is pointing to himself. Of uh, Venom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just saying I, I actually can think of another one, but I'm very surprised at myself I could. That's a Marvel movie, Jeff. <laughs> well, no, you're going to get your shot, Seek. I know. Uh, I'm going to have to... Pass. 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 Oh, pussy. Oh. You pussy. Oh. All right, this Jeff. This is not uh... a good showing for me. Playing like you play Jeopardy, right? Too fucking scared to just throw I don't, out a guess. I Maybe you truly, get points. Maybe you get points. I don't know <laughs> another Chris Hemsworth movie, truly. All right. Well, I'm oh, going to put out... Home Alone? I'm going to go Rush. Oh, oh right? damn it. Can I... Can I... No, nope, no. Nope. Can you? Can you... A no, after pass. Seek, if Seek doesn't say the one I'm going to say, can I... I just thought of one. And I'll text it to Kevin okay, so it's yeah. not made up. We, yeah, we can do that. But Seek does get to guess first. Since, yeah, absolutely. Because if he your, guesses your failure. it, then... I'm never going to win if people who pass get second chances. <laughs> That's a great point. That's a great point. <laughs> uh, Star Trek. All right. Star Trek. Yeah, he's in the first five minutes of that movie. He is. He's, he's Kirk's oh. dad and Kirk's father. That's yeah. a good one. Good, good small part grab. Yeah. Uh, Shuddy Ghostbusters Good one <sighs> Okay so for Chris Men Hemsworth in, Men in Black uh, Oh that's a good one too Men in Black International So we're going to start in the honorable mentions That starts at number 6 These are for no points I can't believe Rush didn't make it Rush is a five dicker for me But yeah good movie. Rush did not make it um, Number 6 was Extraction Ah, uh, number six, okay. Number five was Ghostbusters. Number four was a movie I didn't realize he was in. Apparently he's in Star Trek Into Darkness, which I've yeah. seen, but he dies in the first five minutes of the first one, so it has to be a flashback or something. Yeah. Like or a, a dream sequence. hallucination, yeah. Um, but coming in at number three worth one point is Star Trek. Yeah! Seek, you are officially on the board. I am invincible. <laughs> Coming in at number two, 
Bad Times at the El Royale. Oh yeah, which I, I saw really wasn't was in that. wasn't it's great. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. But number one, I I, I really thought somebody was going to guess this one. Cabin in the Woods. Oh, oh fuck! Damn, yeah. that's a good one too. Damn, that's Chris Hemsworth's number one non-Marvel movie. That is one of my. I don't have many favorite horror slash thriller movies, but Cabin in the Woods and Green Room are the two that I I think are the most rewatchable for me. Those are those are fair entries. Okay, next. Like I love the in kid the in Cabin Rod- in the Woods that has the telescoping cup that turns oh, yeah. into a bong. Sorry, the Shaggy character. Yes, <laughs> he is a very underrated stoner character. I re- yeah. he was very likable. That guy was awesome. Uh, and man, now that you put that in my head, what a fucking device! Somebody has to have that on Etsy or something, right? Like. Oh, yeah, someone's got to make that. I really want one, even though I don't smoke weed anymore. Uh, Okay, the next Avenger up (laughs) is Scarlett Johansson. And I believe Uh, that has us... At me. Starting with Shuddy. So what do you think Scarlett Johansson's most popular non-Marvel movie is? Lost in Translation. Ooh. Oof. Great, great, great flick. Love that one. Only one I fucking know. Oh, that's not true. What else was she in? What else was she? You know other <gasps> ScarJo movies? No, not really. Uh, hmm. Scarlett Johansson, sick boobs, hot. <laughs> <laughs> she in a Bond? She feels like she should have been in a Bond. I don't think she's British enough. Man, that's right. She does. Yeah, she James Bond. Barry James Bond British. hasn't had any um, missions in Santa Monica yet. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck else is she in? I I can say Lost in Translation as well. I'll just use it. I'll just use. Oh, that's the no, only movie I know. Dub, I'm going can't with. Can't double it. up. Shuddy, Shuddy you can't, took since that when? One. Since when was that a fucking rule? It's just always been a rule. He out last round. It's always been a rule. <laughs> Jeff, uh, he. Kevin did say that as a rule, you can't double up right at the beginning when he was explaining it to Seek and Alex. Fair enough. Her. Ah, oh, god damn it. All right. Ooh, out of my ass. Woo. <laughs> I had nothing there. I had nothing there. I no. almost I almost said pass, but I'm not a bitch like you, Shuddy. <laughs> All right, Seek, what do you got for Scarlett Johansson? I have a question. Yes. I feel like I know the title. If I'm like a word off, does that mean that I don't I don't get any points? If yes. you know the movie, it's it's close enough. I think it I think it's called Under the Skin. Okay, yeah. Okay. That's the one speaking of sick boobies, that's the one where she shows them. That's the one where she shows her boobies. Yeah. So uh that what? one. What? Yeah. It it might be even though Scarlett Johansson gets fully nude in it, I anticipate that would be Jeff's least favorite movie in the history of cinema. Definitely. Because <laughs> I hated it. And I can usually get down with artsy fartsy, ooh, look what we're doing stuff. So it was pretentious titties? It wasn't fun? Motorboat um, and boobies? I mean, the titties were, were. I mean, come on. No, they were great. They're great. Yeah. Yep. Movie, Man. yeah. Uh, okay, Alex, what do you got? I'm gonna go Marriage Story. Yeah, that was gonna be my oh. other one. All right, that's a good one. Okay, so the honorable mentions: six was Isle of Dogs, which she did a voice in. Five, The oh, Prestige. Like... Oh, little yeah. magic movie. Number four, unfortunately, Lost in Translation. Oh, number three for one point was, in fact, Marriage Story. Yeah, oh. good movie. Ha, ah, I should remember that one. Good movie. Uh, coming in at number two, worth two points, is her. Yes, yay, Jeff. Damn, Jeff with six. Jeff is on it. Yeah, Jeff sealed it and. Run well, maybe not. Maybe there's still a yeah. chance for. Seek. Isn't it like there's 15 other Avengers? We're not going to do all of them, but 
Uh, and then number one, nobody picked uh, one of her most recent ones, Jojo Rabbit. Damn. Oh. Yeah. I thought you said this website was pretentious. That's why I went with Under the Skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it's not that pretentious. <laughs> Damn it. Um, all, right. all right, we're back with starting with Jeff again. This one might be a little tough. Uh, Bruce Banner is up at bat. Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo, non-Marvel movie, Jeff. I don't even know where I want to go with this. I only really... I actually have three. Hmm. I'll go Spotlight. All right. Good flick, good flick. Seek, what do you got for The Roof? Roofalo. Uh... Yeah, I can't remember the name of it, unfortunately. I, he is, it's if him I beat Ju- you, pussies. <laughs> it's him and Julianne Moore, so I, I can't and I can't remember the name of it. Pass. Oh, oh, damn. No. Come on, just just think out loud for a few minutes and then say something randomly. Yeah. I mean, it'll work. Jeff took forever, so yeah. don't give up this quick. This is accuse a, someone of something. This just, isn't an easy pop, game kick for it me the to street. play. Like I can't I can't picture the actors in my head. So I can't, this isn't like it. I can't do this game. <laughs> so I can only go off the uh, knowledge I have and I, his, I can't connect his name to another movie. So yeah, pass. He's a tough one. Uh, what do you got, Alex? I think it's called the kids are all right. That's the one I, I was talking about. Believe yeah. Julian right. more one. Okay. Yeah. See, that was the one you were talking about. I'll try to think of another one. Well, I didn't say it, so yeah, you you can this have is, that one. This is AOC game rules. Yeah, Alex is giving him that. Let's if if that one gets a point, we'll give seventy five percent of the point to seek. <laughs> <laughs> That's the compromise. I gotta, I gotta pay a tax on it. Yeah. 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 So is that what you, the one you're going with, Alex? I guess so. I can't think of another one. What I'm trying to think of one. That's all yeah, I got he's, so far. He's a tough one. He's the toughest one of the of the bunch. Was Actually, he in? Uh, I'm ready to. Was he in thirteen going on thirty with Jennifer Garner? <laughs> 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 well, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, well, if it's not on the list, then <laughs> it's really irrelevant. Yeah, we can just scrub past that one because nobody gets any. What? Points. I didn't get it. All right, I had two other guesses. Or right, I had two other uh, Spotlight was number my... 4. It was close. Collateral was How... number 6. Do you want to throw out your other two ones, Jeff? These are no points. Zodiac? They're not that socialist. Zodiac was number 3. Now you see me was number 5. Sorry. I I missed what you said. Rant rant. I thought she heard her name and started speaking so uh. my earbuds went out. <laughs> Zodiac was number three. Okay. Now you see uh, me was other... number five. Spotlight was four. Um, Shutter Island was number two. And Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind was number one. Someone, what are you nerd should have had that one? I was going to say Dark Waters. That was going to be mine. Yeah, that didn't <laughs> crack. I recently saw that. That didn't get very high. I don't even know where that one ranked. <laughs> it's on page two. <laughs> uh. You know, we don't have to do Jeremy Renner. He's got a boring yeah. one. You pussies. Let's just skip to the <laughs> final and perhaps most exciting entry. Samuel L. Jackson. Oh. The man who has done a gajillion movies. He's in almost every Marvel movie, and they are all off the board. All right. So uh, I believe we're starting with Seek, right? Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> was he in that <laughs> <laughs> what? all right snakes on the plane. Party, a trick i used to make bradley do around kevin and everybody when he was very very small was he used to walk around saying i've had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane <laughs> classic <laughs> i remember that bit it's a good bit. I, I do that, now. that reference. I do that at parties. I just walk <laughs> up to people I don't know and say that, and they love it. Scream <laughs> it in their face. Yeah. All right, Alex, what's your guess for Samuel L. Jackson? 
Because I think it made its way on a lot of action movie lists. The Hitman's or the Hitman's Bodyguard. Is that the one with Ryan Reynolds? Yeah. Okay. That might be the worst guess in the history of Letterboxd. <laughs> I want my point back that I gave you. That was the most limp dick guess in the history of Letterboxd. You make me sick. <laughs> For God's sake, Shuddy. Show him how it's done. Samuel Jackson is the guy we're talking about. <laughs> you look like you forgot. No, um, I'm trying to decide. Pulp Fiction. Sh- Shuddy looks yeah. like he just like came out of like a trance. He was like, wait a second, where am I? Do I Samuel have pink young? Uh, I'll go. Is it my guess? Oh, Shuddy you fell say, Shuddy? asleep. I said Pulp Fiction. So he went chalk. I'm going even chalkier, I think. God damn it. I'm going to go Goodfellas. Mm. All right. So if we go to the honorable mentions, number six was Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. So that just shows you what we're working with. If Jurassic Park comes in sixth. <laughs> Come on, snakes. I forgot he was in that. Then <laughs> Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Because I guess no one said that. You hear like while somebody's in a force trance, you hear one line of Mace Windu from Episode One thrown in. I think. Oh, and they count that. I that's think that's funny. why they counted it. Yeah. <laughs> and number four, worth zero points, is Goodfellas. Oh. So, uh, <sighs> number three for one point is. Django Unchained. Whoa, good one. Uh, number two, which, worth noting, beat all the Marvel movies. This was his number two movie, with or without them. Inglorious Bastards. Oh, he I narrated. don't even remember him in that. You don't that's see him. Bullshit. He just narrates that's a great, it. Yeah, he's a, that's bullshit. And coming in at number one, Samuel L. Jackson's most popular movie, beating the Avengers, Endgame, Infinity War, is Pulp Fiction. Nice. That's three points for Shuddy. Good job, Shud. So, Seek, you got one point. Yes. Alex, you got three. Oh. Shuddy, you got four. And Jeff trounced with six points. Yep. Fuck it. I say we need that. to do Pretty one sure. where just one more that's winner take all whoever gets well, highest on the list no that's a great idea but as the current leader of the game I decline that <laughs> <laughs> that's fair yeah. man champions show up in big moments and I just had my big championship moment the yeah. four of you pussies I just oh well it was God, only three of us <laughs> That's right. He's Kevin, talking about lucky. himself. He's Kevin, talking about himself you, you dodged. You dodged one right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've Sorry, just been one. shuddied. <laughs> Suck a dick. Hey, speaking of, that's just poor hosting. That's poor hosting right there, Kevin. I win the game, and you play his sound drop because he because he correct me on one thing. I should get my sound drop played all throughout the rest of this podcast. <laughs> oh, just well, to be fair, Jeff, was- fucking pussy. <laughs> You heard there you him. Go. Go, go ahead. Don't step on my fucking sound bite. Alex, go ahead. I cut it out. I stopped. I said, I mean, you did. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Alex is yeah. having a moment. I'm having a moment. <laughs> uh, oh, you know what? We actually, and we also did, uh, myself, Jeff, and Shuddy did some homework since last week's episode. I don't know, Alex and Seek. If you guys had a chance to watch the new HBO Max movie, Judas and the Black Messiah. No, but I want to. No, Ever since I, I saw that see trailer. That. Yeah. Ever uh, since I saw the trailer last year, I wanted to watch it. I haven't even seen the trailer. You're so racist. I watched the trailer this week and then watched the movie. I didn't really know that much about it going into it. I haven't even heard of this. And truth be told... 
most of the knowledge I have of the Black Panthers I got from Forrest Gump. So I was, <laughs> I was really a blank slate go, going into this. So I mean, this was I I went in as a blank slate too, and like one of the notes I had was J. Edgar Hoover appears in it, played by Martin Sheen, and he's all prosthetic up. And I know when Leo played him, I didn't see the movie, but when Leo played him, he had like prosthetics and shit right. And, and is is that is that right? Yes, that is correct. Why does J. Edgar Hoover have to be played by somebody with prosthetics every time he's in a movie? I don't get it. And I will also say because he I was don't... very distinct looking. Yeah, he had a I distinct think. look. I think I don't yeah. know what he looks like. I don't think I've ever seen a picture of him. I only knew J. Edgar Hoover exists because. They say his name in Transformer movies in Clue, (laughs) the Untouchables. No, in Clue. Hmm. I just heard his name mentioned in Clue, and then I remember hearing years later that he liked to dress up like ladies. And then I see he's portrayed in movies by actors wearing prosthetics, and it's like, do you really? He could have just had old ass Martin Sheen playing him. I don't. I wouldn't be like, wait a second. That was something I said that the his makeup was very off putting. Yeah, but I, I didn't know anything about the Black Panthers. I didn't know anything about this story. And I feel like that's probably a good thing because it was surprising. And I feel like if you know the story, you know all the ins and outs and twists and what happens. But that's a that's a heavy fucking story that they yeah, portrayed it was. in this movie. It's almost like the, the, the reverse Black Klansman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. So like in Black Klansman, they send a, a, a black guy just manages to get himself recruited in the KKK to be a mole. And in this one, a, a black guy, uh, to get out of getting arrested, agrees to be a mole for the Black Panthers. I don't know. It's I thought it was... Cast. It's got a good cast, too. Really good cast. That Daniel Kalu- Kalu- Kaluuya? Yeah. Whew. Man, that guy's a fucking beast. That dude can act his balls off. And the, he's, uh, he's been good in stuff before, and this is the I've this is the best I've ever seen him. The guy who plays his Judas is pretty good too. Oh, um, Lakeith like Stanfield. Stanfield. Yeah, he's so, awesome. So, yeah. Question: Did do you think Daniel Kaluuya put on weight for the movie, or that was a fat suit? I think he put on weight. I think he was just rolling thick for this one. Was. I guess Fred Hampton was kind of chunky. He looked like maybe an XL. Because I that's Did one he? of the that's one of the thoughts that I had. I was like, "Damn, Daniel Kaluuya looks chunky here. He's a little pudger." Yeah, for sure. Oh, the, uh, oh I, I was I was getting the names confused. I was thinking that Lakeith Stanfield was was Fred, but no, no, Fred. No, he was Bill O'Neill. O'Neil. Yeah, yep. the fucking snitch or yep. the rat, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he definitely looks like he he put on weight for it. And I I don't know if I knew this and forgot, but he's fucking British. Yeah, dude. That I Man. did not know. I rewatched Get Out somewhat recently, and I love that movie. He was excellent in that as well. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I still think that's probably his best performance, but I don't know that many. My my letterbox D guesses for Daniel Kaluuya would stop at these two movies, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I just add Black Panther. Oh yeah, 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 I had those. Yeah, I would have had that as well. But let's be honest: if if other if the two other movies came out first, I probably would have been reaching and be like, "Ah, uh, Black Panther." <laughs> <laughs> but I would have had that would have been a guess. I love this movie. Yeah. I thought it was fucking intense the whole way through. I thought the just like the mounting tension as like the investigation we'll call it i don't know the the plot oh, no, no we'll call it the plot as the plot round uh um like kind of finishes up and wraps up like it just gets more and more like intense throughout it and i really liked it and i thought lakeith stanfield did an amazing job jesse plemons just stole the show um there was so many awesome scenes and i felt like every scene also like moved the story along like there wasn't a lot of fat on that story. See, um, I thought it was slow, a little slow at points. Like the first forty-five minutes or so of the movie were a little, a little slow. But 
it 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 picked up at the end and i think the score really helped drive the mood and and set the tone for the movie and i i loved it i'm not it like i said it was a little slow at the beginning for me but otherwise i did love it that everybody fucking was amazing yeah I thought the first scene was like really good though. You know how he gets tied up with the FBI. Like that's my, I yes. don't know. I, I, I put, I'm pushing back on, on that point is what I'm saying. I, I no. thought like every scene or not every scene, but I thought all the scenes were like presented some sort of conflict. And because of, you know, the spot and the two worlds that that dude was trapped in, you kind of felt like there were grave stakes for each scene. Like that's kind of what, like kept me on, I guess, the edge of my seat, for lack of a better way of putting it, throughout the movie. Yeah, it was it was solid. Like the dialogue was written like meticulously. Like even the throw throwaway lines were super clever. Yeah, it was a dope movie, heavy as fuck, but dope movie. Uh, what did for you sure. guys? Where where are you guys on the the boner sucking scale for this one? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll sick. I'll suck four point six Black Messiah dicks. Whoa, four point six. How many Judas dicks? I'm gonna suck four Judas dicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm right. four. I'm four Judas dicks as well. All right. Yeah, for I've thought this movie is great, especially in a sea of just. Uh, <clears throat> ever since lockdown started, it's just been nothing but a year of very very mediocre to poopy movies it was it was nice to get a true solid like yeah that's a fucking good movie nice do you think it's an oscar contender yes yeah oh yeah i liked it more than i don't know if my dick linings line up or dick ratings line up but because i keep seeing billboards for the five bloods like around la trying to get uh oscar noms Uh uh-huh i feel like i liked this one more i definitely like this better shot more yeah not even a question this this one kills that movie for sure but it is is this even a thing anymore that it didn't come out during um didn't come out during Oscar season, or do they not hold movies to that same standard, or not as much anymore? I feel like they're kind of moving away from that. They don't usually, I think, because I think they like sometimes do like screenings of Oscar nominated movies that came out earlier in the year. Like I've seen them, I've seen that happen at ArcLight before, where they're like, "Oh, this came out six months ago, but it's up for an Oscar, so we have like two screenings a day." Yeah, I don't know what their their criteria is in the pandemic era. Like, what the window <laughs> of eligibility is going to be for the, the Oscars this year. Or if they're you just going to save funny. this one for next year. I'm sorry. No, what's up? Oh, I just think this is going to be funny and ironic. It might be so ironic they're not going to do it, but watch Jesse Plemons be the only one nominated for this movie. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, you're going to fucking... There's going to be a fucking protest in March. Goddamn down Hollywood Boulevard oh over God. this movie, and that would be epic. I, I, I'll fucking riot. I'll that's, fucking do it. That's a landmine the size of North America. I'm pretty <laughs> sure the Academy will be able to step around that one. Are you? Yeah, that's what everyone thinks about these obvious landmines and just like situations where these corporations or companies stick their foot in their mouths or feet in their mouths. But I think they could do it. And man, I'm rooting for it. Well, people being pissed off is really the selling point for me, but it would just be (laughs) such an epic fuck up because like Keith Stanfield is brilliant. The I can't remember her name. The girl who played Daniel Kaluuya's baby's mama. Did they get married in that movie? Whatever. His his you know, his baby's mama, she was excellent. Uh Dan Kaluuya himself was excellent. There was so, so many great performances throughout it. Je- Jesse Plemons was fucking amazing. He Honestly, was really was good. amazing. Um, but yeah, it, it watch, watch him be the only one to get nominated out of the whole movie. Man, that would be that would that would be the like biggest 
Jeff Clark troll move the Oscars could ever pull. Just nominate <laughs> Jeff Clark. Just nominate because I feel like that's my brand. Yeah, you're right. Well, I mean, you were the one that thought of it. Of course, it's your yeah, brand. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. I'll I'll take credit for that genius idea. <laughs> terrible. It's terrible. I put that in the ether, and that's what's going to happen. I'm sorry. I'm they give, sorry, world. We're going backwards in 2021. They give Jesse Plemons best leading actor, and then Martin Sheen best supporting actor. <laughs> it's Jay Edgar Absolutely. Hooper. They got a fucking white costume designer, and he gets the the Oscar too. <laughs> Man, so like, just terrible. I mean, that's another piece of this story that I I never realized. Like, I I think I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a safe bet. Like, if you're shown anybody from the 50s and 60s, you just like, all right, yeah, probably racist. But like, was J. Edgar Hoover known as just being like a fucking flat out raging racist? Because like I said before, all I know about him is they said his name in Clue. And he likes women's uh, undies. I mean, what a little I, I remember and know about him, I don't I don't think, I don't know. I mean, someone's going to come in, you know, on the comments or something and be like, yes, he was. Here's when he was like openly racist all these times. And I just, I can't think of any times. Um, no, man, no, they're just so- going to come on and call me fat. That's that's all they do in the comments. <laughs> like, they call Ke- Kevin a bitch and they call me fat. <laughs> yeah, everybody on YouTube hates me and Jeff and, and just doesn't comment on Shuddy Boy. <laughs> so from They don't want to get fired. <laughs> from, from what I'm finding is that he thought that the civil rights movement was a communist movement. So, oh, well, I mean, that kind of plays into his character in the movie. But Jesus Christ, was he a raging piece of shit in this? So right. he was, there's a lot more to his profile than that, though, right? I mean, there's a lot of conspiracy theories and just like deep state, like almost like pedigree attached to him. Like J. Edgar Hoover was like one of the original evil motherfuckers in, in the government. Like he's like pretty evil. And honestly, like I'm a huge Leonardo DiCaprio fan. I never saw J. Edgar Hoover, the, his movie, the, the biopic that he starred in because I heard it was terrible. And yeah, like, so I don't want to see that story be butchered by, by like my favorite actor. You know, but there's, I mean, you could read books on J. Edgar Hoover that are just like pretty fascinating, like the levels of like evil and like conniving evil and just like, I don't know, he, that guy was a motherfucker. And <laughs> I mean, I, I, I believe it. I don't know how much of like, like how racist he was. I, I, I can't even speak on that, but I believe he was that racist. I mean, hey, I don't know, do you think it was just done for like, Oh, go ahead. Or, like impact or like. No, I didn't know. I was just like, oh, that's yeah. something like that just added a third thing. It was like clue dressing up like a lady, massive racist. Didn't uh, Shuddy, maybe you can look this up, but yeah. uh, did J. Edgar Hoover shoot someone on the, the White House lawn? I challenge you to a duel. See, nah. no. see, he's like the type of evil that's too pussy to shoot a gun. Oh, like. He does not like because I want I want to say because I thought he also was like there was like a thing about him and creating some group called Black Cell and it was like some offshoot because that's like what Swordfish like was all about that movie Swordfish um, yeah John fighting Travolta, terrorists with stiffer yeah terrorism. he's like he's like an American terrorist that was f- uh, in a group that was founded by J Edgar Hoover. So I mean that could have just been fiction for that movie, but I'm just saying that's how little I know about J Edgar Hoover. Yeah, I that nothing is coming up. Okay. You might be thinking of Dick Cheney. <laughs> no, that was a hunting accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, those are the things we had to do. Right. I know you guys had some stuff. Uh, yeah. Well, just we're sneak- just, we can, we'll do this real quick while we're talking about things we watched. Sharon and I finished Game of Thrones. So this was Sharon's first viewing? Yes, it was. Oh, how'd that go? Jesus. Give her the mic. <laughs> She's still outside punching a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. She, when, you season se- right when, now. when season seven ended, she was like, oh my God, that was amazing. I go, yes, yes, it was. And 
I'm going to be upfront and honest with you. It's downhill from here. So, so all your stock, get out so now. <laughs> if, if you would rather just stop right here and I can tell you what happens and we don't have to go through that, we can. And she goes, no, how bad can it really be? <laughs> and about as great as of- Game of Thrones originally was, actually. That's I'm, uh, I'm still sleeping on the couch. <laughs> after, at the end of uh, The Long Night, she just went, are you fucking kidding me? And she did agree with you guys that I do hate her. <laughs> for making her watch this just terrible yeah. <laughs> because she could not believe that Arya just swooped in and just how everything ended yeah so yeah the consensus is the first seven seasons are the probably some of the greatest television and season eight is a steaming pile of dog poop yeah for me they just crashed or missed the landing so badly that I can't even like grade this series as a whole. But (laughs) I do have to say overall it was taking season eight out. It was a much better watch doing it straight through without the breaks. Oh yeah. It was a lot easier to keep track of who was going where and doing what and even what people's names were. I remember yeah, it was, I, when did I start? I, I might have started watching Game of Thrones around like season three or four, maybe like I binged, like started watching it caught up. And still, once I got current and was watching it like week to week, I was like, man, I wish they would put fucking name tags on these motherfuckers because all these old crusty white guys look exactly alike. Yeah, so, Shotty, it was, was much this easier your... and it was a lot easier to remember. Oh, shit. They foreshadowed this in season one. Oh yeah so all of the, the little seeds that they planted were a lot easier to follow through you know follow the line was this your second time watching it through shuddy yes yep okay unbelievable man how many hours of your life have you wasted on this <laughs> i might have done was three so mad at those motherfuckers so mad like I've had I've had so many conversations with my brothers over Game of Thrones and what was going to happen and how they're going to wrap it up and how epic it was going to be, but how disappointing it was going to be that it was over. And then when it finished, holy shit, I was just wanted to throw just, my fucking remote through my TV. Like, just disappointing all the way around. Oh that would have been great. God. Like, I wish Jeff just had like a webcam on himself as he watched the last episode <laughs> and then when they like decide who goes on the throne just jeff going oh oh what the <laughs> fuck it's fucking little mama <laughs> oh come no <laughs> i would never baxter her <laughs> uh, i'm sure my uh in game commentary was a lot like people who were watching Sopranos, you know, the final Sopranos episode that had people pissed off. But, and I remember my, my, my father, uh, my parents being huge into the Sopranos and saying like towards the end of it, like, yeah, it kind of needs to wrap up. It's getting weak. Um, but it definitely didn't finish with just like a full on, like season dud like that final season was pretty much i mean it was all pretty bad i mean the the one night walker or what is it white walker zombie like war that they had was a well done like action movie that was fine you know what i mean but like otherwise the story was pretty terrible but like yeah so yeah i mean that was probably my like in-game commentary very similar just like to how sopranos and just a lot of what the fuck like Speechless, got my mouth up. Out of that, <laughs> out of that, I can't remember. I was probably super high. That's a safe bet. Yeah. Well, Almost shit. A guarantee. Seek and Alex, man, was it good seeing your faces again? Miss you guys. Miss you guys too. We've enjoyed seeing your faces. Yeah, thanks for having us on. I still watch you guys on YouTube, so despite uh, <laughs> that's, I, I will sometimes. I'll look on. I'm like. 
hey, sweet, another episode. Because you guys usually put them up like the next day. So I'll be like, all right, cool. Um, Because usually I'm off Tuesday. So it's a good day for me to scout through YouTube and catch up on stuff. Word. Well, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to have you guys back on again and catch up again sooner than later. Um, Yeah. And where where can people access your guys' new show together? What's it called? I don't think we went over that. Oh, earlier. we didn't. We didn't give the name. We gave of our the uh, we gave the rundown of what it was, but I don't recall you telling us the name. So I don't make sure you do that this today. time. <laughs> um, well, it's just it's on my YouTube channel, so it's just youtubecom slash Um But uh, the show's called Beyond the Source Wall. So uh, nice. Yeah. See, I told you, Alex. See. <laughs> So, uh, so that was the name of an old show I had, and then I stopped doing it, and then I kind of put it in Alex's head, and then Alex said, "Fine, we'll just call it Beyond the Source Wall." And I was like, "Yes, awesome! It's a it's a deep cut DC reference." Yeah, but didn't that get introduced yeah. in Green Lantern stuff, or was it before uh, that? The Source Wall is kind of a New Gods thing, um, but yeah, the the Green Lanterns do interact with it sometimes. Yeah, in uh, Brightest Day. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. No, no well, it is you know, right. Not, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, wait. It on is this. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Which Shuddy, yeah, what C said was right. Yeah. <laughs> that's what happened. That's what. But yeah, you can watch is. us. We uh, we just live stream every Thursday nights, uh, Alex and I. And uh, like I said, it's just the show's called Beyond the Source Wall. And uh, we're three episodes in. We're going to do Deathstroke, uh, the animated movie, this Thursday in two days from now. And then Alex will, at the end of the episode, we'll pick what we watch next. And that's what we just kind of do every week is we watch something and then the other person picks the next week's movie. So nice. Deathstroke is your choice. Deathstroke is my choice. Cause I haven't seen it in full and Alex has. And last week we watched Batman Ninja, which he has not seen. And I had, so we're kind of shaking it up like that a little bit. Very cool. When, when do we, do you guys see new frontier coming on the list? It's, it's high on my list of things I want to recommend for sure. Um, you we also come watch it with us, Shetty. Yeah, you should watch it with us. Um, you know I mean, which one I loved? I mean, if you're gonna, if that's yeah, a formal come on. invite, that's a formal come on, invite. Shetty. Yeah, come watch New Frontier with us. I would yeah, love Shetty, to watch go. New Frontier with you guys. Shetty just All got right. you guys with the Ram Bropra. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll plan it for we'll plan it for sometime in March. How about that? Sounds yeah, good. That sounds great. Right, cool. Hey, let's do opening day. Let's watch. Yeah. We'll do a watch along, and we'll do the y- Yankees opening day. I want to. I want to hang out with you guys you too. Join, you Kevin, go on the yeah, podcast, now. but Kevin, do you want to watch Harley Quinn with us again? <laughs> no, but I'll, I'll I'll do um uh uh Justice League Dark with you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let, we'll do that. All I right, love cool. Justice League Dark. All right, that that might be the best DC animated one I've seen. That one was we'll sick. do that one, and oh, Jeff, yeah. you can you can pick one too if you want. I'll do the light mode. He he said he's doing Justice League dark mode. I'll do the light mode. <laughs> Justice League, just Justice League. Hey. We should pick <laughs> like the shortest DC animated movie to have Jeff on for the the Spectre short that there was in go. front of the Green Lantern first flight. <laughs> yeah, just put put like a fifteen <laughs> one on just so. Hey, just let's do it. um, let's do the Avengers versus Batman. I'll say hey. this: if you invite me. And you tell me what movie? Um, I'm gonna be all in. I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring my A game. Right. And I'm gonna kill it on the commentary. <laughs> I don't. Like, it doesn't have to be my shit. I'm down. You guys, let me know. All Email right. Kevin. We'll call, we'll, call, we'll call your people. We'll set it up with yeah. your secretary. I like how you guys were in a fucking yeah, the, send the it internet in our group chat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Send it in our yeah. group chat. Oh, yeah. you want Hold, Jeff to be on. Hold on, Puminati. Hold on, before we leave. Hold on, Puminati. Let me show. Let me let me just tell you how these motherfuckers do me. So, Kevin's internet goes down the other day, and Kevin is in a group. Kevin starts a group chat with Shuddy, Alex, Seek, and he says me, but he never the messages never get to me, and he's he's keeping them up to date, real time okay. info on the LA internet scene and what's going on I with don't this know if- situation. I- and they're communicating it to me through Zoom. God damn it, Jeff! Can I even include me. To, uh, I think like, like, me on the, the sna- internet I'm, already I'm a- calls me a diva. Yeah, I, yeah. At least got to give me a chance to clear my name while you just fucking sandbag me over there. Hopefully, the camera picks this up. But you see all of those circles? There's four dots there. You're one of those dots, Jeff. Yeah, except probably the on smallest our one. End. There's only three dots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because, yeah, there is only three dots. 
Jeff has his iMessage so integrated into Apple products, you can't text Jeff's number. If you put Jeff's number into text, it converts it to his email. Jesus Christ, you're just killing two birds in one stone. You could have gotten me in how many different ways, Kevin? You just chose to cut me right out of the loop. Got my email, got my phone number. What other information do you need? And out here fucking just talking around me, whatever. Hey, I guess you and the homies got a new group chat. Cool. We'll yeah. page you next time. Yeah, well, yeah. I guess let me know if... Uh, I guess if now is the time me. that we tell Jeff yeah. that the reason for that new group chat is you two are replacing him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alex, Alex, we got to do that, though. For like three Which, weeks in a row, we got to have these guys on one after another. I would love that. That sounds like just such a fun time. Nice. Okay. We're going to get you, Jeff. Since that camera sucks ass, I am now sending Jeff a so only Jeff a screenshot. And I can't even hold it up to prove when I go to, when I go to text Jeff, his email shows up because then his email will be on camera. <laughs> Okay. Well, we've already dealt with that problem once. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just texted Kevin tried proof. to say I didn't send him something. Uh, and then I pulled up the email to show the, the timestamp on when it was sent and shared the screen on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and, then, that... and then couldn't get it to stop sharing. It was a, <laughs> it was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> I thought Kevin was going to murder me. Evan, didn't you put your home address in a book you sold on Amazon? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't live there anymore, but yeah. The, I, one of the screenplay contests I entered was like, hey, we turn your screenplay into a book, and then you sell it on Amazon. So like, they're like, hey, everybody, your Amazon links are live. Here they are. So I'm tweeting it. I'm putting it on Instagram. I'm on the Ella Show promoting it on SiriusXM. Everybody, like... I think 2,000 copies sold or some shit. And then when the first shipment goes out and people start getting it, they're like, uh, dude, you might want to <laughs> take a look at your copy. And like, I just ordered it off of Amazon, so I got it the same day everybody else did. I opened it up, and they left the fucking title page in. And I emailed uh. them, I'm like, you cocksuckers, why'd you put the, why'd you put the, the title page in? It just, everybody that bought a copy got my fucking address. And they're like, Oh, well, some people want uh, people to have their address in case somebody's interested in the screenplay. I'm like, what? The you fuck? fucking fart knockers. <laughs> what? Like, like, oh, we'll change it. We'll change it. This. That was fucking crazy. That's uh, if, that ha if that happened to me, the guy would have shown up at my house. and am like, hey, I got your address now. <laughs> <laughs> was that that was the Lost Palmas apartment? Yeah. Did you see the, the picture Boognish posted in Discord yesterday of it? No. What? What? They gave it a complete facelift. It oh, yeah. Like... I drive by it pretty Oh, often. okay. They were waiting for him to leave. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for they renovated. Yeah. yeah like, God, we got to get the 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 stoner uh, metalhead out of the building. Before. I'm sure he was the only one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, everybody, thank you for listening. And if you need more MSPH in your life, please check out our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour. And if you want to be a part of voicemails, yay, just call 201 472 0139. And as always, you can just shoot your emails to mad scientist party hour at gmail.com. Speaking of Patreon, uh, another new show has launched. Masters of the Pooniverse. Shuddy and Dom do commentary tracks over He Man, He Man and She Ra episodes. It's um, you have to. The one thing you did that, if I could just critique for a second, you've got to pause for a beat between Poo and Niverse, or the way you said it, it sounds like Pooniverse. Oh, so it's like, like a universe of Poontang. Except it's it's a Poo Niverse. Yeah, a universe of poop. That's much better than yes. Let's <laughs> we don't we don't want I'm people better. coming for a, a poon universe <laughs> show. We want people coming for a poo universe show. Uh, to all the new viewers of the show, if you're here to see my poon tang, I have some bad news. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at we're looking at Shima's poon tang. <laughs> no, it's Shira. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, 
I can't wait to watch the next couple episodes of <laughs> Masters of the Pooh Universe. Oh man. Oh shit. Um and for anybody who's been paying attention to the supermarket queefs saga, we had a Puminati reach out. Her aunt and uncle were contestants on an episode of Supermarket Sweep in the early 90s. So they got us the link, and we did a Supermarket Queefs episode to it. And I haven't listened to it yet, but they sent in a voicemail with insider info and an update on those contestants that we can play on next week's episode. And if um, if you have not decided if you're going to join the $10 tier or not, I highly recommend it. For that episode specifically, because there was vital information that was not given that led us to (laughs) make a line of jokes that ended up being inappropriate. Yes, highly inappropriate. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so check it out. Uh, Shout out to Uncle Tim, right? Yeah. (laughs) Making a dime piece like Aunt Bridget. (laughs) Yeah. Those supermarket queef episodes are so much fun. I love listening to them, like making some popcorn or having dinner and turning that on and listening to you guys riff is really fun. It's even better when you watch the episode along with it. Well, I have the episode on too. <laughs> oh, I thought you just meant that was like your background noise while you cooked. I was like, oh. No, no, no while I eat. Oh, while I gotcha, gotcha, Turn gotcha. it all on while I eat. He's setting the fucking mood, Kevin. Let him set the mood, all right? <laughs> You don't tell him how to watch supermarket queefs or listen. Hey, I just want people t- that consume the product to get to get the most out of it, you know? Well said. Fair enough. Either way, you can follow us all on Instagram. I'm at Kevin Craft. At Shuddy Boy. At Jeffra Records. At Mr. Alex Wilson. At Venom Blog. And at MSPH Podcast. Uh, Shuddy Boy, you got anything else you need to promote? No, sir. No dates at the Chuckle Hut. All right, friends, there you have it. But until next time, ooh, something.